So let's accept it. It can be very challenging to communicate about climate change. Right? It's got long-term effects. The science can be complicated. There's a psychological distance. Right? Maybe it's not going to affect me. Climate has been highly politicized. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So it's not surprising that there's a lack of connection with the issue. Right? And get this. When residents from a coastal town in Florida looked at flood maps, Guess what happened? The majority of the residents that looked at those maps was less likely to accept that climate was changing and that intense storms were becoming more frequent. Let me repeat that. <laughs> the residents that looked at the maps were less likely to accept that climate was changing. And across the political spectrum, they didn't think that sea level rise would affect their property values. It's quite astonishing, isn't it? Now imagine if we could get people to see, experience, and understand the impacts of climate change. Right? I want to share with you how we're revolutionizing the way we communicate about climate change by using virtual reality and immersive experiences that can transform passive viewers into active participants. And the theory of change behind this approach is quite straightforward. Right? It all starts with knowledge and awareness. When we are aware, when we have the knowledge, we're much more likely to engage with issues, right? And when you start engaging, you start acting in, in accordance to what you think, what you believe, and then your actions, in turn, reinforce your beliefs, and you become much more likely to support and even advocate for policies that will bring about the changes that we so desperately need. And VR is powerful. When you put the headset on, it takes less than five seconds and you're transported to a different reality. Right? You may know you're at home or maybe you're sitting at a public library, but physiologically, your body, it reacts as if what you're seeing is real. So VR can promote prosocial behavior change. It can, it can increase our knowledge and preparation for natural disasters. Right? And VR can build agency which is knowing how to act in face of a problem. In the Santa Cruz experience, you can see the boardwalk, you look behind you, you can see the waves, you can see the sand. VR can create an emotional connection, right? And also, let's accept it. All the data in the world don't make a difference if people are not engaged or don't understand their importance, right? Technical studies are important, and they give us essential information. But they're usually where the conversation starts and stops, right? We have this overload of information and a deficit of engagement. Do you know how much the Barbie film cost? It's about $145 million. Right? Now, guess how much they spent promoting the film? It was $150 million, right? And that's very typical for Hollywood productions, right? That's a good ratio for large video games as well. And don't get me wrong, this is not a critique of the film. It was great. It was a big hit. The, the point here is that we have something we can learn and we need to learn from Hollywood. We're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in technical studies with almost nothing left for communication, engagement and outreach on climate. So I'm originally from Brazil, I'm first generation college student. I moved to the United States pursuing a career in technology that was greatly inspired by my love for video games. In the United States, I discovered kite surfing, and spending time in the ocean awakened in me this profound love for the environment. And that resulted in a dramatic career shift. I quit my job, high-paying job in tech, went back to school to study climate, and since then, my mission has become to bridge this gap between complex environmental concepts and public knowledge, knowledge and awareness and action. So in graduate school, I also discovered Aikido, which is a martial art that teaches us that there is a very real alternative to our very basic instincts of fight, flight, or freeze. And that is to align with change, flow with it, rather than resisting it. 
And that is a profound message in a changing climate. Right? During the last year of my studies at PhD at UC Santa Cruz, I bought a drone, and I was out in the coast taking these amazing visuals, creating 3D models even from those images. One day after a very hard week in grad school, I was back home playing a VR video game to unwind when I had this insight. I was like, why can't we use these very realistic visuals, these 3D models in a VR environment to communicate to people about climate change? We could show them some of the risks, but even more importantly, we could show them solutions. What can we do about this? It took us around two years, but we finally released our very first experience right here in Santa Cruz. <laughs> and the experience was available at the local public library for about 10 weeks. And during that time, over 400 people tried it out. Right? Nearly 80% of them declared a significant increase in their awareness about sea level rise. So remember, we talk about the theory of change. It all starts with knowledge and awareness. Right? And you can also start engaging with immersive content. Many public libraries are getting the headsets. Many schools are getting them for education. And even without the equipment, you can start engaging with immersive content on YouTube or Vimeo. Through our projects during the last few years, we have found that VR can lead to surprising results, all the way from California to Florida. Right? In Long Beach, residents became open to talking about managed retreat, which is this idea that eventually we'll have to relocate from at-risk areas because it's going to be too expensive or too dangerous to continue to live there. In West Palm Beach in Florida, more than 80% of the VR users chose a combination of seawalls and living shorelines as their preferred adaptation alternative. Living shoreline is this idea of working with nature to reduce climate risks. Right? And in that case, we're talking about mangroves. Do, they do a great job of protecting coastlines and increasing coastal resilience. Right? Back here in Santa Cruz with a great team from Save Our Shores, we created a VR class for middle school students. In, in the class, they learn about marine protected areas, or MPAs. Right? The students go through a 10-minute VR experience, followed by a series of activities. And the team interviewed over 300 students, and the results were incredible. More than 50% of the students were able to remember at least five species in a marine protected area. 90% of them were eager to tell their family and their friends about what they had seen. And my favorite number, 20% of the students, that's over 50 kids, right? Over 50 students wrote letters to their state senators and assembly member advocating for the enforcement of MPA regulations. Yeah. Can you believe it? 50 kids. So just throwing facts and issues at people isn't going to cut it anymore. We really need to shift from traditional passive communication approaches to immersive experiences and narratives that resonate with the heart and inspire action. We can't just inform. We must inspire. So let's not just read about the change. Let's visualize it. Let's feel it. But most importantly, let's make it happen. Thank you.